So before we dive into the scales themselves, let's just take a quick recap on um, our 251 uh, chords that we're using. The two, uh, I'm using an F minor six. On the G dominant seventh, on the five chord, I'm using either a diminished, that's that uh, dominant seventh flat nine sound. Or I'm using the A flat minor six. Voicing. And then on the C minor, I'm just using the C, uh, C minor six. And for this purpose, we'll do a longer two five one. So. Again, to recap on the scale outline that we're using, on the two chord, we're using a D Locrian, which actually resembles uh, a B flat dominant seventh, but starting on the third on the D. And on the G dominant seventh on the five, I'm using uh, the Mixolydian flat two flat six. minor but starting on the fifth on the G and I'm using for the most part I'm using um, on the one chord I'm using uh, a melodic minor sometimes I will play uh, a harmonic minor so that's the scale outline downwards. So this time I'm going to start on the D, but I'm going to put a half step between the root and the seven. So that on the downbeat lies the root, seventh, fifth, third, and same thing here. Root, seventh, fifth, third, and on the C I'm going to run of practicing a, the scale through there, starting on the root, either upwards or downwards. Now, one thing that I like to do is to anticipate and start on beat four. Coming down. starting on the thirds, so I'm going to go to the third of D minor, seven flat five. Third of G. Third of C minor. And of course, I like to start on beat four, anticipated, one, two, three. Because I'm able to land on roots, thirds, fifths, and sixths or sevenths, I can change the direction as well. I'm going to get into that a little bit more in a minute. So that one coming down. So that's the thirds. Let's do the same thing on the fifths. You can see I started here. There's another pathway that actually works really well. Instead of doing the half step between this, um, the seventh and the root, you could actually put the half step between the second and the third. The 
there's a sort of a scientific reason why that works out, but um, I'm just going to go with the fact that it sounds good. And then on the fifth, before I did the half step between seven and uh, root, another pathway would be to go. So I kind of like that just a little better. So that's. on the C minor I went. I could also do that half step further up. Between four and five, I actually like that better. Or I could go to the seventh and then sort of go to the sixth. So there's a, a couple of new pathways going upwards. Let me do that one again. Or. So that's the fifth going up. Let's try the fifth going down. fifth going down and of course I did that starting on beat four which I tend to like to do okay let's try the seventh and the sixth so the seventh on D minor seven flat five <laughs> I did the half step between seven and one. There's actually a different pathway you could take. I could put the half step between uh, two and three. I like that slightly better. On the dominant seventh, G dominant seventh. I kind of like that one. Uh, toss up between those two. Or this one. Either. And then the sixth. Now, on the C minor, I could also start on the seventh. several pathways for the seventh slash sixth going up. Let's do downwards. I'm going to do the sixth here. I could have done the seventh. Or the seventh this way. So you can see there are several different pathways. Now going back to the C minor for a second and starting on the fifth coming down, there's another possibility here. Um, I'm gonna to get to this in, in a later episode, but if I treat the fourth as a chord tone, which is nice, it's kind of a more contemporary sound, I could actually play, I could do a half step between five and four. So again, if I do the fifths, I could also go. get to those in a little bit um, in a little bit but you can see there's quite a lot of nice choices here in uh, scales with added notes 
So we've covered the root third, the fifth, and the sixth slash seventh. Let's take a look at the seconds, or the ninths, the fourths, or the elevenths, and put them into practice as well, because we may happen to land on those particular notes going up or down too. So the second or the ninth on D minor seven flat five is an E flat. <laughs> to get to uh, a root or a third or a fifth or a seventh, so I could just do a half step here. And on the G dominant seventh, I could go uh, this way. And then on C minor. Let me do that one again. Do that one coming down. Now on this second on C minor, I could actually put a half step between the two and the one. So there's two options there. Run it straight down the scale. before about the fifth and a half step between here some whole lot of different options but good ones try them all and see what you like the sound of okay let's do the fourth or the eleventh I'm getting up to the uh, seventh as quick as I can Let me just run that one coming down. That way or this way. minus some flat five, the one that we haven't looked at yet is the six. If you look at that, that's actually like a B flat dominant seventh. There's another pathway. And the sixth on G dominant seventh. It's a long way coming down. 
down. So you could do this actually. Because there's no, you know, half step between here and here. I'm just going up. So there you have some scalic options. Now, because you've got all of these root thirds, fifths, and sixths slash sevenths landing on downbeats, it just means that you can change the directions really easily. <laughs> few exercises of your own. If you happen to not land on a root third fifth or sixth or seventh on a downbeat, now you know what to do when you hit, you know. those rules, if you will, that we just went through. It just means that if we want, we have the option to just keep a scale going up or down when we want to just extend that scale-like sound. Very cool.